everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can paint this adorable, fun, weekend outing, wanderlust, mudding scene. Now, if you're not from an area of the world that is into this activity, this basically is about taking your off-road vehicle into the dirt and playing with it and getting it really muddy. It's a really fabulous community. It's a huge huge hobby here in the south because we got some mud and we have a lot of off-road vehicles like there's a circuit that eventually becomes monster truck when you guys see monster truck that's just the end of a of a lot of events of people just having a blast that's what this is about is just celebrating the dirt on the mic is my husband john hi guys he's gonna be tracking me with our cameras He's going to be reading your chat, asking me your live questions, because this is initially live stream. Though, if you're here on the replay, hi! Let us know what you thought of this lesson in the comments below. All right, now here's some things that you need to know about this. It's a little bit uh, messy. I don't really have a way to show you how to do this technique where it's neat and tidy. So if you're a person who cannot handle mess, um, I would say tomorrow's a good lesson, or get some rubber gloves so you don't get anything on your hands. But as long as you're okay with mess, and having a good time and getting in the mud, this is the lesson for you. Am I excited about this like a little bit too much? Oh, I'm excited as well. One of the things that I'll let our... our oh, this our, is funny. You know what I forgot? What'd you forget? A blank canvas. What, you know what? I'll work... I guess you know what? I'll, you're going to sneak off and get that. While you're sneaking out, I'm going to let everybody know that we have the beta closed captioning happening live right here on this episode. So oh. you guys... Boy, we get to see how badly I enunciate. <laughs> but so you guys know, if you'd like, if you're here live and you need some uh, need some extra assistance, be sure to check that that closed captioning is working for you. So these are these artist panels. Um, they're not really. They're like a crushed particle board that you get at your local craft store. They come in packs. Um, everybody has one. I'm pretty okay with this grouping of them. I get them all the time. And um, the thing to know about this is when they get wet, they can warp. So I'm going to give you some strategies to prevent. This is sealed in an unbreakable barrier of plastic. Mmm. I need a <gasps> non-squeaky chair. I realize that. <sighs> it's a squeaky chair. And there's all this stuff going on. I don't have whisk on my canvas. And All right. So reference is going to go over to the side. If you check the description below... And whether you're on the phone or whether you're on a desktop, there's this more. They give us 50,000 characters. This is where I hide the materials list and links to things and tips. In that, I hide it. So don't let me hide it from you. Go open it up and look, and you can see everything that we're going to be using in today's lesson. Um, <clears throat> I don't have uh, all of my little wishes up. So I know yesterday I didn't get in. There was a wish. This is a watercolor pencil, I think. Nope, maybe. I think so. Nope, it's a pencil pencil. <laughs> Gosh darn it, I'm having a day, babe. You know, I do not I'm have what you need. I'm going to write it in and paint and then paint over it. How's that? You can that? totally do that. I can... All right, I'm going to do that. I'm going to... I know I'm going to be painting this with... I have out my ultramarine blue and my titanium white and my burnt umber. So I'm going to... I know I'm doing a background first in the mix of these two things. So I'm going to get these. And I'm going to just write... Um, a couple of things I know I've been seeing, which is like, um, there's been a lot of natural disasters for so safety for the families going through fires and floods and earthquakes. Yep. And IBS. So safety for families, right? We need a cure and understanding for IBS. And what I would really wish for people going through IBS is that your families and extended members understand this is not a tummy ache and you're not being unreasonable. All right. And then the last one was jobs. We need some jobs. Everybody who's looking for a job, I'm wishing you get a job. And so those are our wishes today. Even though it was a little bit crazy, we usually write them in in like watercolor pencil and we have a grip, but today we got the wishes in that's the we big got them thing. in man like this is what it is in life it's not that you do it perfectly it's that you do those things that are essentially meaningful and we send out our good intention to the universe that being said i'm gonna take my art this is my art sherpa palette knife you can tell that because they're red and i'm gonna mix a little of my ultramarine blue into this titanium white and i'm gonna use this to paint 
a blue field all over my whole canvas. This is called, an, you know, a ground. Now we're not doing a true ground because we're not doing this in a very thin wash because that's not great for acrylic paint. <laughs> so we don't do that. But we like the idea of creating in this nice field of color, so we're going to pursue that. I'm going to use my big giant number 30 Art Sherpa brush. You just use any big brush that's going to get your paint spread around the canvas. I'm going to dip in, and you're going to see me do this very important flip thing. Flip, 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 flip. That's how I get paint all into my brush. Here we go. All blue. This is the start, because what would be in front of us before our uh, beautiful off-road vehicle saw mud, it would see blue sky, right? I hope so. Well, <laughs> or a rainy know, day. There's generally a little mud. We're gonna make a mess. Most it's a beautiful yeah. mess. Most of those off-road vehicles, they have a an upside on them. You can pretty much tell. Wheels go down, but occasionally they end up the other way around. Do, 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 do. I really love all the paintings I'm getting to do lately. Thank you guys for putting up with with all of my stuff so I can do all this art because I'm honestly, it's just making my heart so happy. I, some of you have expressed concern that I'm painting so much, but the truth of that is I'm super happy about that. I love it. Yeah. All right, here we go. So. Loving that. Whoop. I got a little brown from earlier in there, but I'm going to brush that through because it would be crazy to be concerned about a little brown mess when we're about to make a big brown mess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, I'm going to dry my canvas. I'm going to let John talk to you real quick, and then I'm going to give you some success strategies for our brown mudding effect. I love this mudding effect. I hope to see so many variations on it. Okay. Okay. <sighs> Oh, hold on, Wrong button. There we go. Sorry. I had, uh, it kept, you, you would, yeah, there's buttons in the way of buttons. I don't even know how to explain this. Other than, I have too many buttons to push some days. There's just a lot of buttons back here. And not enough coffee. So, I don't know if the lesson is, you're, Amount of button pushing is inversely proportionate to the amount of coffee one has ingested in a given day. But I think even that is too much math for the amount of coffee I've had. Whew. You know, I got lost in math and we didn't even get to talk about how you dry a canvas. Why we would ever talk about math on this channel, but okay. <laughs> if you if you must, if you must math, math it was, away. It, it was theoretical. It was very high level. It's abstract. All right, well, this is about to be not theoretical. This is about to get real. I love this effect so much. In fact, this is like uh, the bokeh effect. I came up with the little sponges. Mm -hmm. I'm loving this. I hope this spreads like wildfire. I hope you mess makers embrace this and use this in a myriad of narratives on your canvas. So if nothing else, hang in me for this. This is so much fun. So what I have here is burnt umber. And for this particular case, I'm going to be using uh, the Golden Burnt Umber. I did test one with the Artist Loft um, Level 3 Burnt Umber. And it was a little bit, you can kind of see it even between the two tubes. The color is good, but it's just more transparent. So it was just, I would have to do like three layers. I would have to do like three layers. I'm trying to, you yeah. just, I'm fixing what I was just, man, you're going to have to watch replay. Math, it's going to get you. Math? Is there a math thing? It's funny. Okay. All right. I'll watch replay and find out the math humor that's going on. So, and I bet, I bet I'm going to be like, mm, I love you, baby. I All know. Right. I'm just... So, <laughs> so the one, so you're going to, everybody's burnt umber is going to be a little bit different. One hack that you can do if you find your burnt umber is transparent is to add a smidge of black to it to improve the um, coverage of it. And the other thing is to dry and then do a second application. All right. So that's the first thing that we need to know. The next thing we need to know is, dun, 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 the mystery tool. I'm going to get my Sherpa nuggets. Sherpa nuggets. All the Sherpa nuggets. So these are little tiny sea sponges that look like nuggets, little nuggets. 
We did check. This is apparently okay ecologically, at least so far as we were able to determine. And it's not hurting the plant or any of that. So we were very happy. It may even be helping. So we've got these sponges. These little craft sponges will work too, and a cellulose sponge will work in a pinch. You're trying to create a very irregular base. And you want your Sherpa nugget to be slightly damp, right? Maybe even a little damper than slightly. So I've gotten this wet, and I'm going to just load, load, load it up. You can get a little bit of the black if you're at all worried about the coverage, right? And you're going to come here, and you're going to be just. You're just going to do that all tapping, the Tapping, 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 right? And that's the mess place yet, but we're going to be there in just a second. Now, I'm going to get my spray bottle. You can use a big spray bottle. I've got my little spray bottle that just happens to be here. And I'm going to unbind my paint. And you can even, every once in a while, drip out your sponge. See how I'm doing? Yes. All right. Making the mud. Making the mud. Making the mud. So now you can start to see the mudding. The muddening happening. I see. <laughs> and I have been squeezing out my sponges at the top of the canvas and really letting them drip down. And then where I needed to grab some, I'll grab some. So I'm using... All the properties, if you're ever wondering why there's anti-foaming agents in paint, <laughs> this will be the tech. Doesn't that already look like splishy, splashy, wishy-washy mud? Oh, yeah. Mud, mud, I love the mud, mud. It is so good, good. Tappy, 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 tappy. We're just doing this in little segments. Oh, no. You're just going to cruise right along now. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to get our picture and picture loaded here. Ah, picture. That's picture. what I was doing. Yeah, I can even do like this if I want to. So you can just be really messy. Go. You can see what I'm saying. This isn't good for a French manicure. So you can clean it right off your nails, especially you have gel nails with uh, either acetone or uh, I think the best is rubbing alcohol. But you go with what's right for you. I'm going to put some nice paint out. I like to get some thick applications of paint sometimes and be like, choo, choo, choo. And I don't think I'm going to want to go much further than this because, you know, hey. I've got to be hey. able to get it wet and release it. So I'm going to get my little sprayer. Sorry about that earlier. That's, that's what I was saying. There were too many buttons and not enough coffee. <laughs> There's never enough coffee. The ratio of coffee to buttons. What your aunt said about coffee, I actually, like, I guess Facebook had not had me follow to her. And I was such, she's so funny. I followed her. Hi, Sherry. Um, she's so funny. She's like, I went to my barista and she asked if I wanted decaf. And I was like, is it Monday? Are you kidding? I was like, that's right. Don't play with me. It's Monday. I love her. She's so funny. <laughs> So I'm just sponging it out. And you can, again, this is foaming. This is why we don't add soap to our paint. Yes. Because there's so many products in your paint trying to prevent this effect. Right? I'm just like releasing the pigment. Look at all that foam, though. See how that's almost like soap, isn't it? Yes. Yep. That's what's happening. If you're wondering. And then if you've got buildup that you need to take down from the foam, you just tap that down. And you know, it's just, you just have fun and you move this paint, you let it make a mess and you get out mudding. This is the virtual effect of what you do with your car. Oh my gosh. I, I know there are those of you that are giving this to some person in your life that's all into off-roading. And they are going to be so excited. All well, right, I'm pretty excited to see this one. Yeah, it's a really, he was really pleased when I did this. <laughs> and I think this was your idea, wasn't it, babe? You had said, what about a view, view through a window? Well, I don't know if it's exclusive. Like, we do so much co-collaboration in, like. All right. Now, if, if, what you would normally do is you would dry this. And if you need a second coat, you give it a second coat. If you're not perfect. That's what you would do. You would dry it. I, for the interest of this video. She was, she was expecting to want to have a couple coats on there. That one turned out pretty good though. You that one just, did. You so we have to rolled. decide. This one was pretty good too though. Yeah. That one was pretty good as well. So see, I mudded one up. I think I'll go with this one because I 
prepped it and it's all super bone dry and it'll save us a little bit of time but I just kept playing with this until I was really happy with my mudding effect on this one I did the artist love so it took uh this represents about uh two and a half coats of artist love had the same foaming thing so that's that's the that's just the difference. There we go. So once I have that in and it's super duper dry, you guys have a traceable. I know I put my chalk out here. There it is. We're going to draw in. We're going to draw, <laughs> draw in our view, right? I don't know. Mm -hmm. gonna... Now, I want to have for sure about three fingers at the top of the window, right? And I want to have a nice dash. So first I'm going to curve in my little dash and what I found is it was like I came in made on the left hand side a mark this is an 11 by 14 canvas panel so I just like my four fingers made a little mark and then I'm going to arc a nice slope I'm not a car designer no but John uh John likes cars so he uh he vetted my work <laughs> you know what I'll say is when you're when you're doing this you just want to have enough of the dashboard there mm -hmm. to let them know they're seeing the inside of a truck or yeah. a car or something. But this is the window right here we're doing. Right now we got we're doing the car with the, the our sweep. Yep. And there's we've got our we've bump. got our um windshield wipers that are sweeping. Now if, so that's what we're leaving room for. Okay, let me let, me, let John explain it. Just I was gonna say, if you're on if you're on if you're from Europe, the bump will be on the other side. Oh yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. I know we're always putting cars on the wrong side of the road, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. That's all it was. It's just <laughs> Your bump may be reversed if you're on the other side yeah. of the road. I bet they know that, though. Yeah. They just look at us and they're like, oh, Americans. So now I'm going to bring, and this is about, oh, two fingers, two and a half fingers over. I'm going to bring just a straight line out, right? And then I'm going to have oh, another two fingers line in here that's going to be maybe one and a half fingers. Now, the inside of the dashboard is a slighter version of this. And I'm going to just sweep this up a little bit and down. And then I kind of curve my corner up. And that's how I catch the corner of the car. I'm going to have another corner of the car right there in black. And I tested this on my uh, eldest daughter. She had a lot of fun getting the curve of the windshield wiper. I now need to make the sweep of my wiper, right? Mm -hmm. I need my wiper. And so you're just trying to make a nice arc like a windshield wiper had come up and arced out the window. Doesn't really have to be that perfect, but that's the shape you're trying to get. The traceable I gave you will work on a 9 by 12 and 11 by 14. It's sized up for that uh, canvas, so you can just do this on either size. Once you have that. You're going to put your more sky back in. We're going to put our sky back in. And how I do that is I'm going to get a. What is this, number 10 ruby satin? And we're just going to paint all that beautiful mudding out. Now, Erlinda <laughs> had a question. Hi, Erlinda. This is a great time to put it in while you're filling this in. Uh, she was asking, can you talk about, um, let's see if you be specific, how did she say it? I think it was underbinding and, uh, oh, yeah, it was basically how underbinding and, and grounds and how th this may be an affected here. Well. All right, so on this painting, right, whenever your your acrylic paint can take so much water, it's generally on the tube of paint or the website. It's somewhere between 30 and 40% water and still bind well to the canvas. Um, if you overwater it, if you just do washes, which a lot of people do on acrylic grounds, it just doesn't stick and then every it starts to delaminate. Have you guys ever been painting and it was like the layer underneath kept lifting up? Flakes that's, off. That's underbinding. Right. It just doesn't affix itself to the surface. And so things are often about uh, making sure that you stay within the parameters of what your paint can take. Oh, don't stress your paint, dudes. Don't stress your paint. Mm hmm But that's what that is. And so when I do the ground, I tend to do the ground either with an airbrush medium if I'm going to do a very thin application. Or I just do a thick application like we did here together today. And even on this, you can see that I left the paint fairly thick, even where it's running. And so we don't really, and I did it with the Artist Loft 3 and with the Golden, and I haven't had any problems with the binding. 
Some companies, um, I find that Liquitex Basics can have binding issues. So your fix to that might be to, if you feel like you're having trouble, um, is to either use a little less water, switch to a medium, or even spray varnish it to fix it down a little bit. Because this is a fun project. If you're doing this for like fine art or a resale or a very serious gift, you may want to upgrade the paint on it. Hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I'm just making this. I'm trying to be mechanical, which I'm not. You're because just you trying know to how make I feel about awesome. cars. You must be like, she's painting cars. Well, you know, I, I think that painting. You voted, so I had to. Well, I mean, like I, Neil said really something cool about space, you know, and that's that he didn't, he didn't want to see, uh, an artist, a painter, represent space accurately. He wanted the emotional represent representation of space, and I sort of feel similarly here. Like what you do to emotionally represent this activity, I think, is probably as important as it capturing it um, photorealistically. I agree. I truly do. So. Now, while we're here, we're going to put out a little bit of our black because we're letting this dry anyways, and we're going to get in our windshield. I mean, our door, our, what is it? The dash. The dashboard. Mm -hmm. And the dashboard, we're just going to use our black paint. I have uh, my Mars black by Whole Bind Out. Just any good black paint that gives you nice coverage. And I'm going to paint the corner here. Solid black. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I love my little dashboard and there's um i'm gonna turn my canvas so i have an easy time this is probably a like a vintage more older vehicle john like figured it out well we did things because to... the rounding of the board the dashboard and stuff in the window yeah we just chose to do things that were iconic in time periods and you know your 50s and 60s trucks had a lot of these rounded um sort of sweeping but primitive shapes so uh, you know whereas you found more and more complex shapes and and square bodies and things as you went later so we just thought this would would represent some of those things i had you know car uh car counseling well you know <laughs> i did though john was like okay it's got to it's like this. Can you see this? And he's like showing me dashboards and stuff. I'm like, you're going to have to get me references because I have none in my mental, my mind bank has no references of cars. Well, that's looking pretty darn good. Yeah. Now, everything here I would want to be dry for the next part. We're going to do a sponge cloud and we're going to dry brush a little reflection on that. So I'm going to dry this again. And that's going to give John a chance to tell you his philosophy of, well, it's not really philosophy. It's facts you need to know about drawing your paint. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's true. Okay, so this time, uh, use low heat settings. Keep uh, your, you know, your air mover device uh, far away from the, the surface. It's really just the air moving over the surface that helps uh, speed the curing and not so much heat. Heat can cause um, color and distortion and shrinkage, especially on your, your more budget paints. Um, but your pro paints generally don't have that issue. Um, so just want to keep that in mind when you're doing this. Katrina, you was asking where we could find the reference for today. And the reference for today, uh, was, it, you can find on, on in the link in the description down below. Uh, and it wasn't actually a photo. This was just something that Cinnamon made up. Um, we just sort of talked about it. and um, She asked me questions uh, about different elements of design uh, of the painting. And we talked about the what would be fun to represent. We came up with this and a number of other, other you know, kind of interesting takes on uh, different activities. But, tr you know, this mudding where you sort of had this, this first person view wasn't so much a reference photo as much as just something that you and I, Cinema and I created on just yeah, together. Yeah, there wasn't, no, there wasn't a reference. There was uh, me looking at a lot of landscape through windshields in weird different car blogs. And going, what would be nice? And then me looking at a lot of race pictures and mudding pictures. Yeah, we looked and at a lot. And how did the mud go down the window? And then I was like, looking even at the outside, going, what would that be like from the inside? It was a, 
rally? It took it. Yeah, it took a it took a few studies to get here, but I'm really proud of the method and the technique. Hey, babe, can you microwave my coffee? I can absolutely microwave your coffee. Go I'll, give those kids a kiss. Will do. All right, here you go. Thank you so much, sweetheart. So now for the next part, we're going to add a little highlight. I'm going to be using my Cambridge brush, um, which is the brushes that have the bristles and the filaments in them. Now you're painting at home. So I, you might have different stuff in your brush bucket. What you would be looking for is a brush. This is a number eight. That's about the width of your thumb. And it's going to be giving you, feel your brushes. What's your scratchiest brush? For this next part, I tend to use a scratchy brush. I like the scratchiness for the, the dry brushing of it. And then we're also going to be putting in a little bit of our mud effect where the mud's dripping down from the windshield wiper itself and uh, along the swipe path and just a reflection. So this is going to be pretty easy. I'll put out a little more of my white paint if I can remember where the heck I put my white paint. <laughs> You're, you're not here? <laughs> now, I'll put this other burnt umber out. I'm like, I just grabbed it. You can kind of see there's a difference in those two colors right there. So this is the Artist Loft 3 burnt umber, and this is the Golden burnt umber. So they're different here. And definitely, I would say out of the two, I like the Golden um, a little bit more. But either one of them will be good and acceptable. You could do, you could do Golden, you could do Holbein, you could do... Like any of the good companies that give you good coverage with your with your umber. So the first thing I'm going to grab a little of my white paint and I'm going to work it through my brush. Say I'm working it through. I might even get a little of this blue and kind of work it in so it's a little off white. All right, and I'm going to come here and along the top of my dashboard, I'm going to just make a scratchy, and this is just me letting the the canvas texture, you know, really show through. Scratchy, scratchy, scratchy. And I'll scratch back just a little bit into the dashboard. You know, you know how like they get that little reflection in them. And then, you know, take it down just a smidge. Here at the corner, I'm going to add a little bit of this reflection. And then up here again, right? Like a little bit of light has come in and caught that. That's real friendly. It's real simple. You're real good. Now, I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to get one of my control brushes. And I think I'll get one of my cat's tongues. And this is my number four cat's tongue. I'm going to get my burnt umber loaded all up onto my, my brush. And I'm actually going to mix in some of my black to it. So it's quite dark. And along here, I'm going to paint in a drip. I'm going to come down and be like, oh, my mud be dripping. So I look like a little, little drip down. Oh, yeah painting in this little drip down because what happens is the swiper moves the mud it collects up and it sort of drips down everybody who does this is like yeah yeah it totally does that I know I looked like a lot of pictures um but now that you've seen it you guys can't unsee it so you guys are going to be able to use it in like all your projects that you want to do like this I think there's a lot of fun stories that as artists we could tell so I highly encourage you guys to run with this idea and have a blast hopefully it'll take off like Boca Everybody be doing it. We'll all be having fun. Now, I know that the windshield wiper is going to be resting here. So I like to gather up a little bit of a bead of the mud along this edge. It has pushed down. It's starting to drip that way. Like it would. And I like the darker value in this because then we can um, add like some more like highlighted values and make it feel just uh, thoughtful. You know what, man? You've got to have some thoughtful mud. I'm going to get some of my black and I'm going to come along some of these drips on the little right hand side and kind of make sure that they have a little bit of a Shadow here, right? You know, I'd have to say it's my experience that, uh, Other than that in. mud's a lot more thoughtful than rocks. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm just making sure I have a little shadow under my mud so it pops a little bit. 
And I'm going to get some of my just pure uh, umber, and I'm going to come here and I'm going to make some little value highlights. See how we're doing? I know. We put a lot of thought into our mud. Put some thought into your mud. That hue over there, remember? That's what oh, yeah. we mean. That hue over there. Wait till those shirts are out. <laughs> Thinking about that hue over there. All right. Now... Oh, that looks so good, doesn't it? Are you it guys like does. freaking out? I love this. So I'm going to sketch in my landscape. And since I've got my brown out, that's as good as anything, right? To start talking about this. And so I need to create this sort of like little distant farm road story. So over here on the right-hand side, I'm going to come up my little windshield wiper. Make a little mark. Say, let's say hill. It's sort of off in the distance. And then there's, there's a little bit of a road. That's where my little truck's going to be. That's, that's ahead of me. And then some more farmland coming off over here. And then we could have, oh, some of those, you know, those little farm trees that happen, at least out here in Texas, they do. They're like these distant little uh, mesquites and shrubberies and, and little fellows. That's pretty nice. From the road here to here, I'm going to curve. A nice little line that's like my vanishing point coming here. I'm talking about a road that's going away. And then it's going to come right to about here on my lower windshield. So now we've got our... I have a mudden face! <laughs> hey, hey mudden face! Yeah, that's going to happen when you're mudden. Especially if you're in a Jeep convertible suzuki any of the soft tops the other thing i want to tell my viewer about is the idea that some of this road has growth in it in the center so i'm going to just make sure that i remind myself of that right here that little growth i just painted my hair dry <laughs> <laughs> that's a going on right and so we've got puddles and things to talk about and that's always really fun when we get to do the puddles so the first thing i can do on my rug there's just a lot of brown I get to put out right away. Believe it or not, there's just, when you're painting mud, strangely, they'll be painting a lot of brown at first. So I'm going to get my burnt umber and my Mars black mixed together. And let's come and start adding that to the road, right? Well, if, in order to make a road look like dirt, not cardboard, it, it got to have more than one tone to it. It, it well... Yes, and you really need to mix uh, paints together and not paint just too much directly out of the tube. You want to reserve that. Reserves it for special hues, man. For special Actually, hues? Actually, I'm going to paint the whole... I'll put my little center divider in. What about I think normal I want to just hues? It all in this dark brown. Black. Dark brown and black at first. Going to make it just the easiest for me and for you. I'm still using the number eight Cambridge Bright, and I'm just painting that all in. So, what's a special hue? Is that like Hugh Jackman? <laughs> He's definitely a hue over there. But what about like Hugh the Plumber? <laughs> Not a hue over there. I don't know. I'm asking Making you introspective. Making me answer questions I just couldn't possibly tell you the truth of. I don't even know, man. <laughs> I don't even know. Goodness gracious, aren't you just a handful? So that's pretty nice. We've got a nice value happening here. And that's good. So there's a road that's going off. Now I'm going to grab my yellow ochre. This is the yellow ochre. And I'm going to add this to here, and I'm going to go ahead and get a little of my phthalo green. And I'm going to add this over here. I really tried to limit the palette on this one some, so you guys didn't have to get as many colors. It's true. You go palette crazy. You're like, I really, like the Believe colors. it or not, my full palette's still considered a limited palette for I most know. artists. I know. But it's so weird. It's... I'm like, really? I'm going to put out some phthalo blue. <laughs> I like, I like to work into my grass to punch against the ultramarine mixes of green. Because ultramarines mix a very muted green when you work with them. So we're going to put a little out to play with that. So that our day, and also for the sky. We've got a sky we've got to do. Right? But we're just blocking in right now, aren't we? Block it in, block it in. And I'm just going to go right into my yellow here. 
my yellow ochre and I haven't rinsed my brush so it had everything that was on it previously. Go ahead and just paint the rest of this in with that color. All of it. All the way across. Have a blast. Go, 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 go. And look, it's streaky. Look how streaky it is. It's it's so streaky. It's so streaky. It's so streaky. Yeah, yeah. It's so I really feel like I should have been on the Muppet Show. Like I missed something. You know, give it time. There Sesame may be Street. The once somebody said you belong on Sesame Street, and they were trying to be like all trolly, but I was I like, know. oh my god, thank you. I was I was so complimented. To be honest, <laughs> like, at first I was really like, nice of you. That's really the nicest thing anyone's ever said. And then I had to realize that you were being a troll, weren't you? But it doesn't matter. Sometimes a troll says something they think is mean and you think is fantastic. So I guess it's all about perspective. It really is. All right. That's a profound thought. All right. So now we have our view, the beginnings of a stormy day, a road going off into the distance. How awesome are we? Let's rinse this brush out. Rinse, 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 rinse. rinse. You know what that is? That's guard dog. That's a guard dog? Ruff, ruff. I have some nuggets out. Do I have my, my Sherpa nuggets? Because I love using my nuggets I on my clouds. Yep. But first, I got a paint in a background sky. So I'm going to get my burnt umber kind of worked into my brush. And I'm going to work that into my ultramarine blue because that gives me, it mutes the blue is what it does. It says this is a stormy day. Because I'll be like, how's it going? And then the, the color can be like, it's stormy. How's it going with you? I don't know why my colors have all become like a tennis pin all, but that's fine. Hmm. Up here in the mud and truck, we drives. We got to drive. You know. Uh... But then it'll get weird and I'll go Maine and it's all Stephen King. So I don't know how it's going to go today. <laughs> I'm taking this darker color that I've mixed to the top of this and I'm just brushing. You can see I'm even following the arc a little bit. I want to do that some, not too much, because I'm going to want to come through with my little nuggets. I'm adding white and blue so I can continue the color. If I need to get a little brown in there to mute it, I will. And I'm going to just keep painting this down. Now, because I'm using this scratchy brush, it's giving me sort of a scratchy stroke, but I'm actually wanting that for this. There's a cat in the neighborhood. She started it with Twix. Twix is taking it super personally. So if you hear Twix having feelings about that, she's been a really, really good dog. Or it could be the Amazon delivery person who also yeah, occasionally will part. get her riled up. Huh? Which will also occasionally get her riled up. Well, because she's sure that that's the person who keeps bringing the cat. <laughs> Therefore, has to be dealt with. So you can see how I'm just following that arc a little bit as I'm lightening this as I go down. Now I'm going to dip in water. I'm going to get a lot of white on here, a little bit of my blue, and I'm going to work that through. Look at me working that through. Work, 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 work. And we're going to just keep bringing this down. I love that. It's the time, we're leaning into everything that's kind of messy and imperfect, and I'm going to just paint a little bit around my little trees that I had loosely talked about. So I'm getting lighter and lighter and lighter to my horizon line. And this texture here, this is great. Like, if you have texture on your canvas, that's fantastic. That's just quality paint right there. There's oh. going to be this bit at the end where we, we, we smear a window that's going to give you all a heart attack. There we go. I had a little fix there. All right. Just making sure our horizon line is light. See how I'm making sure? Yeah, we're at that wonderful, uh, you've been mixing those blues together with some of that. Uh, paint. Is it Payne's Gray or are you using? Ultramarine. Ultramarine. Okay. So when you get those two together, it, I I can't rely on the computer color matching. Oh I, my goodness, your sky is so phthalo. I, and I have to start accurate. I have to start going off an of eye. Well, you're also. No, your I'm screens. good. But I, I will show you. Oh, I'm I see. good. Why? Well, you know, <laughs> well, the. I'm good. Yeah. I was, yeah I, what I can do is I can turn around and look at it and match from here. So your screen won't be. Oops. Do you want to borrow the reference for a second? I'm good. Okay. Yep. Now I'm gonna get my little sponge wet again. I had wet pre-wet it before the show, but it needs to be re-wet. This is my nugget. So cloud. 
Breathe in, breathe out. Say with me. I can do anything I can cloud. I can do anything I can cloud. Clouds aren't perfect. Mine don't have to be perfect. They just need to be fluffy and fun. It's going to be okay. All right, you guys ready mentally? Yeah. I'm going to take my little nugget. I'm going to load my sponge all up with my white. This is still a little bit wet. You can definitely make sure there's a bit of the blue in it like I've done here. And I'm going to come right up here. And I'm going to just very loosely up and down make some little clouds. Right here, let's 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 put some right here. Oh, that's a nice little cloud, isn't it? I'm gonna get a little more white out. Ba doop ba doop. See, we're clouding it's... it up. Clouding it up. Cloud the issue, man. Cloud in the issue. Some more white on there. Come over here from the other side and say, oh goodness, this cumulus is is right here. And the trick is notice how I go up and then I, I have down, but then I might I might come back and be like, oh, crazy stuff's afoot. Because what you're trying to do is show those wind currents that are afoot. Now, anywhere that you can take a little bit of your pure white and just very loosely, I'm barely touching. This is this is how light it is. It's like barely, it's like a kiss here sometimes. Sometimes I'm pressing in and I'll try to describe that to you and sometimes I'm barely touching. This is the barely touch. I'm trying to show a little bit of fun in my, look at that. Oh, that's a beautiful bit right there. Come here and give this one another little beautiful bit coming from the left down towards the right. There we go, up and down. Oh, there's some currents there. Look at that storm take shape. That storm's having a whole moment, isn't it? Yeah. Pressing just a little bit harder, a little more contact on this downward cloud. Look at that. Yeah, that's uh, the reference photo. So you guys know is a is a different color blue than what she's doing here, and that's because the ref the the picture in picture reference photo is different, not her reference. Yeah. Just, <laughs> so the computer's having trouble matching me. I'm matching me. I'm making yeah. sure that these little clouds are right down. Right. Oh, is that a beautiful stormy day? Yeah. I don't really know. I have anything more to say about that stormy day than yeah. that. Yeah. No. I might ask John for a clean cup of water, and I know I'm pesting you a lot. Oh no, you're fine. Lot. So yeah, I was I was just concerning. Yeah, you're great. You're doing okay. great. Now while I'm here, I'm gonna get my brush and I'm gonna work in just a little of my phthalo blue. Work it, work it, work it. Oh, okay. Never mind. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna wait for John to come back because he's giving me fresh water. Okay. I'll just do it right when you get back. It's not a big deal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna. Come along here and mix a little of our ultramarine and phthalo blue. And we'll make just a weird little glow right here that's going to help us break up our storm because you want it to feel like it could have just rained, like we've all just left the rally, like these things have just ended. And that you can almost smell. You know how it is when you can smell the earth, smell the earth in your painting, but don't actually sniff your painting or eat your painting. Thank you. I might need them again, but mostly I think I'm good. So I'm going to get some ultramarine into there like you do. So I've got a little phthalo blue and a lot of ultramarine. I'll go ahead and grab a little of my burnt umber. And this will pick the color up just ever so slightly. And I'm going to just come along. Just Right here, see how I'm on the corner of my brush? Just wiggle that just a little bit. Yes, I do. Just also creates this atmosphere. I actually was like looking at this like Texas sky to get this, so this is this is like accurate to the weather. So I've got that there. Let's see how that's looking. I'm gonna come back with just a little of my wine into it. Make sure that this is here. I want this this value here, because this implies that there's a bit of a light. There's a light over at the Franklin place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There we go. I always put something optimistic, if I can, into my art. 
And the trick with this would be not to get it too saturated, not to get it too high. You want just a little kiss of it. And if you hate it, just paint it all out. Nobody will be mad at you. Now, the other thing I want to do is I want to get some reflections in my, in my mud puddle. So I'm going to get my ultramarine. Work it through my brush. Work. Work it down. Get a little of my burnt umber in there and my blue and my white. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to pull a little bit of this blue. And then let's make another little puddle here. We're just starting to talk about things. You don't know. Maybe right from this window. Pull it as level as I can. Because water is wet level, if nothing else, even though it's vanishing. And I'm going to come right here. And just add a little bit on this side of the road, too. Distant. When I'm distant, I'm going to be very light with the paint. And when I'm close, I'm going to be a little bit heavier. You want your color in your puddles. And I'm going to be coming in here with my brown paint and really shaping these puddles. But you want your puddles to reflect whatever it is you're painting. Whether you're painting like a Russian replica of a great uh, landscape painting from the turn of the century. Or you're painting a muddy painting with me. Your puddles are mirrors to the sky. Doesn't matter high art or not, puddles are mirrors to the sky. As soon as you mirror the sky, you're good. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to dry this off and I'm going to not rinse it off. I'm going to load up with a little bit of white and we're going to come across here with a little bit of this. I'll come across and maybe even pull one down here. Yeah, we're done. Like a little mirror to the sky. Sky mirrors. How are your sky mirrors? I love that. Isn't that a beautiful thought? Now you're going to look at puddles and go, oh my gosh, there's sky mirrors. That's I wonderful. Love it. I love it. Let's have a little landscape fun. Let's sip our coffee. Hmm. I can always stop and sip the coffee. You know what? Yeah. That's another, that's, that, that's a, if somebody hasn't made that mug, it needs to be a maid. What? Stop and sip the coffee. Stop and sip the coffee. We got to make it. Write it down. <laughs> it's on the list. Is it? Is it actually oh, on the list? I hope it's on the list. I have a list. We'll make, you know, it has to have a little gnome on it. All right. I make it. All right. Deal, deal, deal. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to take a little of my, uh, Phthalo green and my burnt umber, and I'm going to mix them together fairly vigorously. And then I'm going to get into my yellow ochre, and this is going to make my distant farm kind of grass color. I'm still on my number eight Cambridge. Here we go. Two hooting it up, and now all of a sudden this is just, now it looks like some, some water just hit the landscape, doesn't it, a little bit. You can just take a little of this. I like to take this with a brush and go wiggle, 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 wiggle. That's what sounds good. But we're just getting that out there. Sometimes you can get a little more ochre on there. And I like to just pull, I'll take it across here and just pull it down right along that horizon line. Pull, 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 I'm pulling it down. Come across, pull it down. Come across, pull it down. You gotta hug those kids again, John. Will do. I'm pulling it down. I'm pulling it down. The door. The door. The door. I knew there was excitement for some reason. I'm just taking that ochre. And I will let John get that thing. Well, I guess I'll just keep painting my ochre because, you know, what you doing, right? All right. Hang in with me, guys. It's okay. I'm here. We're going to wait for John to get back. I don't, uh, we must be signing for something. I don't know what we're doing. Hey, look at my thing. I don't know what we're doing. I would switch it for you, but I don't remember the button. I might have to switch it for you. I don't know. 
The next door neighbor needed a jump start. Did you give him a jump start? I guess we're live. I, I feel really unneighborly, but I don't know what to do. No, sorry. Their car is parked in their driveway, and they needed the little jump start boxy thing. You know, oh, that they you just carry our box. Oh, okay. I, I, I don't have one. So, oh. She, oh, they were just asking. Yeah, they were like, do you have one of those jump start boxes? I was like, no. Oh, we I, had one. Did we lose that one? Uh, no. No, actually, that was a friend of mine's who lent it to me. I am just coming over here with that mix of green and ochre again. But that's, Top of the hill. Boy, that's what's live, folks, is kids. Who Welcome to live. They're... We teach painting, but we do it in a in a storm of activity. We do. Life is like money. You can't make it neat. Sometimes it gets messy. So it's going to be a little greener over here. I and swear. And as I come forward, I'm going to make it darker green. So I'm going to take my phthalo and my, uh, my phthalo green and my phthalo blue. And I'm going to get a little of my burnt umber. And I mix all of these together. And you see it makes this nice, rich color. And all of this up here is going to be based in this value. Isn't that lovely? Oh, yeah. I love building these things up. I'm going to just come on the corner and I just wiggle this brush. See how you can do that? Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle the brush. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle the brush. Just pulling it in. All right. Here we go. Just loving that. And then I've got another little dark green area I'm going to play with over here. I'm going to wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle the brush. I'm going to make this little patch of loamy, beautiful earth. I'm going to come kind of along this road here. Get this little road a little bit. And then I'm going to get a little bit lighter as it comes. Because we wouldn't see it as well, right? So you guys see how I'm like... I'm pressing harder. I'm offloading a lot more paint, but as I come forward, I lighten it up and I just kiss, 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 kiss. No, which brush are you using there? I am using the number eight Cambridge brush. Okay. And it's a bright. It is a number eight bright. Okay. With bristle. Yeah, it's a, it's a. I just wasn't sure if that was a bright or a flat or a filbert or. Just to I think probably because it's been like a crazy distracted day. Well, you know, I'm yeah, just making it's sure. It's like I've been to the front door. <laughs> <laughs> Who, man, it's a, it's a live, it's live, folks. It's live. If you're wondering if it's live, wonder no more. Mm. I'm gonna go ahead and throw out my cad yellow that I also have in this mix of colors. This lets me pull a couple brighter greens where I need to. As I need to, and I'm also going to pull my burnt uh, sienna into it as soon as I locate it. No, that I know I put out because I needed it, and I know it's here. I got umber, umber white, drink white. Must be the one tube that's flipped, and it was. The world was spinning and right there with it, and she won. Mon Mona had a request, and I was. Hi, I, Mona. I thought I'd pass it Hi, on. Hi, beautiful Mona. I love all the pictures of your flowers that you've been posting. That's so fantastic. They're just beautiful blooms. The pansy was just a lot. Just made me tear up. How you doing, sweetie? She's, all right. She's Socializing. Brilliant. So I'll say these three words, and then you're just going to gonna get it. Uh-huh. Vincent Van Gnome. As you wish, Mona. That is a really good idea. <laughs> I will Vincent Van Gnome. We can have all the painters as gnomes. <laughs> so, I'll do it. So our, you can have your favorite. Mushroom hats off to Mona. That was a good one. Girl, you rock. I don't know why I put out two cads. I, I, was, I think I was so excited about what Mona said. I just... You're so catty. <laughs> oh my gosh, somebody write that down. You're so catty. Oh my gosh, that thought over there is so catty. Oh, oh it's just the hue over there is so catty. That's right, that thought over there is so catty. That hue over there is so catty. <laughs> it's too, it's oh, too good. Man. You can't get excited about that. All right, I don't even know what I'm doing now. I've lost. You've lost track. I've, you've distracted me, and I don't even need to switch brushes. All right, 
I'm going to get a little more of my yellow ochre and there's some green below it's so going to pick that up. I may grab just a little bit of the green here into it and I might get some of my burnt sienna. So that's just going to change the richness of the paint mildly. You could just do burnt umber if you only have one of the browns and I'm going to make these little dashing strokes. Can you see how we're doing? Yeah. The little dashing strokes. It's like a, just a soft little dash. I'm leaving some of the underpainting showing through. I want to create, I might even get a little of my white in here. I want to have values into this. So what I'm trying to say is like, far off in the distance, there's a little grass growing. There we go. All right, like over here, and I'm going to add some of that right here on this space. Just, just dashing it along. I think my uh, earphone is coming off, baby. I'm having a day. <laughs> it's all right. Heart, please don't like. Oh, oh, like it's like really bad too. Wait, no, I got it. I got it. I, got it. I think I got it. I don't know. Did you get it? We'll find out in a minute, won't we? Find out. We'll find out in a minute. Get a little of my ultramarine blue into that, and let's let's just talk about these little trees. They're kind of they haven't fully springed, right? We're in that weird space, like we could be coming into winter, or we just came out of winter. So either time frame will work for what we're seeing here. And we're just painting these sort of distant little fellows. I'm going to get a little of my brown into my brush. It's quite, I haven't rinsed it out. Let's see how we're browning that. Push this right here and I'm going to just come along this edge with that little bit of brown and even work it into the, um, some of the field here, I'm going to come across on a horizontal stroke, just browning it in. This weirdly gets us ready to do a bunch of really awesome Russian classical art. Mm. I know. Let's enjoy our road for a second. So our road is a really fun space. And the first part of our road I'm going to explore, I'm going to get a little of my black and a little of my burnt umber, and I'm going to work them together. I might even get a little of my phthalo blue worked into this. And I'm going to come along my little road edge. I'm going to darken some of this a bit. Yeah, you do. Darken the road. And maybe some spots between the puddles. And I'm wiggling the brush back and forth. Let's, let's, let's wiggle some of that mud into that puddle. We see we made like a little bit of a track there, didn't we? And I'm going to put that puddle a little into perspective. And what I mean by that is I've made the puddle wider at this side and tapered forward. And that's how I sort of imply a little perspective to that. So just putting a little perspective to the puddles. Make sure we got some nice dark mud. Dark mud. Now, you're like, oh, man, how come you didn't do the uh, windshield wipers? It's because we want some of this to show through them because they have those little uh, openings, which John swore were super important. I'm grabbing a little more of my brown. And I'm just talking about, like, maybe some tire tracks. Can you see how I'm kind of implying that? Oh, yeah. I'm saying that some, some cars drove through here, and that's shaping our puddles maybe and shaping what we're looking at. Just all along here. Shaping. And when we have that, I'm gonna wipe off a bit. I'm gonna load into my burnt sienna. I haven't rinsed. And you can see me loading back and forth, back and forth. I'm gonna grab a little bit of my yellow ochre. And let's add some little mud highlights. See how we're doing? Mm hmm Here and there. Like there's one right here along this little mud puddle on the left-hand side. Wiggle on the corner, taking that front of that little mud puddle. Let's bring a little mud back this way. A little bit of that light color. Maybe here in the center, I highlight the center a bit. That's where the grass can grow. Highlight the center between here. Not too much back this way, right? So we're just playing with that. 
Now let's get a little of our burnt sienna in here, but we've got our dirty brush, so we'll work it through. Get your dirty brush involved. <laughs> dirty up. Let's add a little bit of this. And just along there. See how we're just saying some whole kinds of stories. You can even be like, no, 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 no. A little bit of you. Enjoy your mud. Playful. That's, that's I'd say, the state you want to be in with this whole thing. Just be playful. I'm going to have that in. I'm going to rinse all this out. And I'm going to get playful with my grass. So I'm going to pull out a little of my green. And I'll go ahead and add some burnt sienna to it. You can even grab a little of your cad yellow. I'm going to just come here and work that through this space. See these little strokes? Pull, 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 pull. I'm just randomly, and that's like implying like a little loose bush, right? Because we're looking at it through a window. It should be slightly out of focus for us. Right? I'm just pulling this like this. And I'm going to work this through, 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 through my brush. And you can even kind of put a little of this into your yellow ochre. Here, and maybe give another layer to this little distant space here. But you don't want it bright, because if it gets bright, it's going to pull up too close. So you need to have it somewhat muted. Now. I'm going to go ahead and get my cat's tongue. I'm going to come right here. I'm going to get into my yellow ochre. And it's okay that it's going to tint with the little green that's there. Because these first little bits of things, I definitely want muted. Even though I'm going to get a little white into them so we can see them, I definitely want muted. And I'm going to come right here. And I'm going to make these little dashes. A little more yellow. I might even get a little of my burnt sienna. But there we go. Just trying to. They're yellow in respect to what's around them, but they shouldn't be yellow, yellow. I'm just tapping my brush to apply maybe some blooms or something. See, I'm just tapping right here at the edge. Breathe. Now, as I'm going, I might get a little of my cad yellow into this mix, but it's mixed in. That's going to mute it. You can see, then it kind of yellows it up a bit. And then that's sort of going into the green a bit. So we're talking about flowers, but we haven't really done the flowers yet. Put that there over the other muted colors. Here, be playful with these flowers. out. Now while this is having a moment, I'm going to take a little of my burnt sienna into my phthalo green. I'm going to make sure that I come through this part of the hill and I just knock some of this back. See, I'm knocking some of it back. Making that little bit shape. Look at how I left some of those highlights and then pulled that and that creates a bunch of shape and thought. I can do some of that over here, even where a little of it back to the field. I always think that's nice to take a picture, have a thought, surrender some of. The shape. I'm going to take a little bit of my green and my burnt sienna, and I'm going to come along the road and make a little patch of that. I do another little patch right here. the distance, but it's, it's very dark. It blends in. None of these colors are as bright as I normally paint, and that's because of the day. It's the nature of the day that we're talking about. Right. So I'm going to get into my muted colors again. Let's, let's get maybe even a little green in there and get the, the ochre on there and come over here as well.
So whenever I do a lesson, you know, sometimes I'll indulge in a bunch of color or a bunch of stuff. I determine what I can remove from the process. You guys don't have to get as much stuff. That's the thing I try to do. Stuff looks pretty, pretty okay. Yeah. We'll continue over here. Let's get a little more of our yellow ochre. And we're actually getting pretty close here, huh? Yeah, I th we've got to do a windshield wiper, a streak, and a little tiny car, but the flowers are about to be done. Yeah, I mean, like, this is actually coming along pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah, it's why it was a two hoot. Like, you might normally think this is a three hoot, but the reason it was a two hoot is that it actually was pretty friendly about technique and process. I'm just tapping out a little color here, talking about it. I can even come along here and say, oh, there's maybe, maybe a little kiss to that, right? Yeah. Right there, just a little bit. I like to be playful. Sometimes you'll get like, you grow so many flowers, you're like, wow, I really got real on me in a nanosecond. <laughs> now I'm going to come and get a little of my phthalo green and my yellow ochre. Just at first. I'm going to add just a little bit of a highlight to this green. Just along here. See how we're doing? Not a river, just some. Get the dark green and the highlighted green. Now we got to play with some playful green. So I'm going to get my phthalo blue out and a little of my cad yellow, and that's quite bright. It's going to be quite bright, and, I, and so much so I'm going to grab a little of my burnt sienna into it because it would be so bright, we it would feel not quite part of our our space and we want to make sure it is. I'm going to come here and let's test it. Yep, too minted. So back into the yellow. I don't want it minty. Little bits of these little bits of grass that I'm just brushing out. Work it through, work it through, work it through, work it through. A little bit. I'm gonna make my brush a little bit wet. And come in here. And I think it's really fun sometimes to uh, I'll get more into the phthalo green. Like pop up a little bit of the bright colors, even in the center of the road, just a smidge. And maybe just a few little bits of grass. See how we're doing? A little grass like stroke. Trying to say, oh, there's some stuff to happen, but we're not going to go past here with our bright colors. We don't want to take it far. Don't take it too far, man. Put some of our bright little little blades over here. They're just, I'm just brushing on the corner of this brush and letting it make the grass for me. I could use grass comb. I could a lot of things. Things that I'm doing to make me successful. I'll brush to the right or to the left. I'll change the curve of the stroke and kind of break it in. Maybe add a little bit there, add a little bit there. And then if I want to, I can always come in and get a little more yellow into it, pop just some of it. Just some of it. Like that. It's getting there, isn't it? Some of it's getting there. Yeah. A little bit of the grass. Thinking about that here. Oh, we're like, oh, I'm going to be crazy right there. Let's step back and look at it. Oh, that's some nice contrast. Let's rinsey, rinsey, rinse it out. Now I'm going to take a little of my cad yellow and some of my burnt sienna. And that's going to knock my yellow back a bit, but not much because this is cad, right? And let's. And a couple of yellow flowers. See, I'm going tap, 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 and make little clusters. Not everywhere, just a couple places. I could tap a little sprig coming out this way. Little flowers by the road. Little flowers by the road. 
And the reason I didn't get them into the, the only reason we have the CAD uh, red light is for the headlights. And we could have popped this into this, but I felt like it would have just taken us into a place. I'm going to get some wine into this mix right here. It would have taken us somewhere so saturated, I think we would have not one enjoyed our pop of yellow color that's here. I've added white so I can add a little highlight to these guys. Help us see them. How is that? Like? Oh, that's a pretty little patch of flowers, isn't it? Oh, Let's I do like the it. same thing over here. Probably when they started driving, there was a little bit of flower here, but it's gone now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, the strange thing is, is that, you know, people can spread flowers and things. They do. Yeah. We used to do it a lot more because we would be, you know, carrying flowers as decorations on us that would spread seeds to other parts of the area. Yeah, we used to be a much more helpful species. <laughs> now we're kind of a problem. Oh, well, what are you going to do? Tread lightly. Tread lightly. I like it. Leave no trace. Leave Go no in trace. places where it's approved to do these kinds of activities. Actually, it's so funny. My dad is responsible for Pike's Peak, I believe. He opened that trail because he was riding his motorcycle there illegally. <laughs> <laughs> for years in the 70s. And then it made a trail. And then everyone kept doing it because they were like, oh, look, there's a trail here. I'm like, look what you did to the ecology. Well, but now that they have the he's just looking at me. He's like. <laughs> He's like, you're so crazy. Nice thing is, is there's lots of approved places where you can go and do this now. Yeah, there is. And they've opened it up as an actual trail now. But I just remember it used to be illegal. My dad had opened it up with my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wrote it. I think it was protected at one point. All right. Now here I'm going. You can see I'm just adding these little highlighted flowers, right? And those highlighted ones against that bright yellow, it really pops, doesn't it? As let's let's look at it full screen. <gasps> oh, so pretty. I yeah, really two things like that we're gonna do. One, I'm gonna get my brush all very, very loaded with my black paint. And actually, I, for this, I may even uh, I'll save my. Uh, fluid for if I need it. I have it in the description list and I may or may not need it, but it can be a problem. And I'm going to just very lightly say that this is the middle of something. So I'm going to have this little knob here. There's a little bar that goes out. Along here I have a black line. Right along here. I'm using my number four cat's technique you brush that just gives you some control over this. That's the windshield wiper? We're doing the windshield wiper. Gotcha. Add a little more water to this. And now I'm going to come right here. And I'm going to create the bow. Like we do. And the bow should be disappearing kind of behind this window. And then every so often, I'm going to come over and just do one down, one down, down, down. I'm doing that. And I'm going to get this pretty dry brush. I'm going to wipe off the extra, and I'm just going to very, that's too dark, very lightly, dry brush with this little hint of the windshield wiper and this little part of the knob. You want it to be there, but not be there too much. If that makes sense. Yeah. And I may switch to my scumbly little Cambridge, which is why I keep these guys around. They scumble so nicely. They do. They they do. They they give me that sort of like dry brush little look. So I'm gonna go like this. Just wiping out on my towel. Feel slightly darker 
little dry brushed area right there. Just keep it parallel because it would be blurry through the window, and that's the trick there. That is the trick. Keep it blurry through the window. Now I'm going to get a little of my white into my black. And I'm going to dry brush a little bit of a gray highlight along this windshield wiper. course along the back. Like a little contrast, right? Yeah. And then on each side here, just a little bit of it, but I want the black to show. So don't take your black away. And if you need to, this is where you get the fluid involved and it can be very, very helpful. So you could use craft paint. I really like the golden fluid paints or the whole blind fluid paints or the goldens on the fluids are I think are my favorite so far just for the pigment on the, um, on it. Now, Neil was just asking. Hi, Neil. I was uh, typing it out here. Why didn't we include the steering wheel? Oh, was, just wasn't viewable. Yeah, and, and we just, you know, what I, I was typing out, it just, it didn't seem necessary in this. This is sort of a, you know, a, a representation well, of the truck. And in, in the um, windows we were looking at, I think it wasn't it the thing was the steering wheel was on that long roddy thing. Yeah, it hangs thing. down low. Yeah. And it just overcomplicated. Every time you went to try to introduce something like that, it overcomplicated and just made it. Uh, it Less than what it was. Yeah. This looks so, great. This is fantastic. I got black paint all over myself and my brush. <laughs> where instead of on my thing. So I'm going to take the fluid and I'm going to come along here because it's a very deep black. It's a carbon black. And so that's going to give me a nice result. And I can play with those shadows. Because again, the windshield wiper to me has some contrast I've got to work out. That's what I'm playing with is that contrast. Spaces. Oh yeah, that makes that that really pop. And we just want it to pop a little bit. And if we didn't have enough pop, we come in and we get the white along the top. Give it just that pop of white, right? on the tip here trying to catch those little bars as if they had a little glint of the white on them there we go so for me yeah now for me it was like really super important that i got the windshield wiper but given the age of the truck and the positioning and everything seemed unlikely we would see it and so I just didn't include it at that stage. And now we've got to get out our detail brushes because we got a little truck to paint, don't we? Mm -hmm. I like that was the little addition that you did that I completely was unexpected. Well, because that was requested. I had posted up the picture step. I sometimes I share process pictures in the Facebook group or on Twitter, different places. And then you guys will let me know what you think of those different things. And somebody had said it would be great if you would add a little truck in the distance to like create relatable scale and maybe a little tail light and i just thought well that's too fun so i think you know it was definitely inspiring to me i'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna over to my thalo green i'm going to use my number two um filbert here i think and i'm going to make just a listen, little distant little guy up here i found like i wanted it to come a little bit above Oops, there we go. A little above the ground so we can see a little space under the, the wheels. And the first thing I did is I did this little square. Little square. And then I did a little kind of square up. That was the top of it. And then I popped this side out a little bit. Smidge. These are small little motions. <laughs> little tiny motion <laughs> a, little bit, a bit of my even maybe even my black into the brown into the green because i'm just darking it i want it to be sort of that rustic green this is what i'm doing but i still want it to be identifiably green now the 
the inside of the windshield is black. Where's my glasses? I don't know. I need my vision enhancers. This is a tiny little vehicle. I think I can make it even a little bit bigger, though. I think I had the first one just a little bigger, didn't I? I don't know. This one's neat. Is this one neat? <laughs> I think it was just a little bigger. We can make them bigger. Yeah, we're going to make it a little bit bigger. It's not that you can get this wrong or anything. I'll just go ahead and like get the shape all in and green, and then I'll add the windshield when I feel like I've found it square. Because that's what you're playing with, is you're playing with the square and the square. You're finding your spaces. I'm finding my spaces. Finding my spaces. All different places. I'm going to take a little bit of the sky color that's still available to me. Watch this I'm underneath this thing. There we go. Make sure that we're seeing some blue sky. Now I'm going to get my black. But first, the windshield. And I'm going to dry this with my hair dryer. And then in about three strokes, we're going to have a, a distant little jeepy truck. Okay. So while she's trying that, we'll just look over there. Oop, no, not that button. That button. Man. So I guess, yeah, I'll say thanks, guys. I know that today's been uh, a little bit of a different day. And uh, I've, I've missed a couple button pushes. So thank you for being a understanding for me today oh you did great babe well i'm gonna add a little green uh yellow to my um thalo green for the next layer you don't see bit. all the crazy button pushing <laughs> true i'm appreciative of it i'm gonna just make sure that i've got a little bright green here and there we go Isn't that nice little green truck for you and me. I rinsed out very vigorously. I'm going to get some black. And then I'm going to take a little bit of this very carefully, as carefully as I can, paint a little black circle on the back. That's the tire. Hopefully you guys can see. I'm going to get a little gray. Get a little gray. I'm going to come in the center. The hubcap. And I may have to come back to the back again. Make a little reflection here in the window. And I think it's nice if you still have any sky color left to also add a little bit to that. See how it did? Yeah. Add some sort of black. Back in black. But I just want to make sure that we can really definitively see the tire. I just want to. A little bit of the white again to pick up a little bit of the gray. I'm going to come over here and make the tiniest little license plate, right? Little micro adjustment. Yeah. Sure my window looks good. My favorite part is the mudding part. I like oh, it. Oh, I gotta put out a little bit of my cadmium. Red. Oh, see there's you, you there's just red, a smidge. The cad the caddy. Get, the get cad it. is so caddy. Gotta upgrade the cad. That thought is so caddy. Up cad it. Up cad it. I really like it. I I find all these little plays on words to be very enjoyable. I'm going to add a little pad tail light right here. Little pad tail light right there. I have to upgrade my glasses again. Now the fun part of all of this is getting a little bit of the burnt umber and I add a little bit of the Black to it on this little tiny brush, and then I'm going to just start tapping out a little bit of this. 
mud experience. Look at that. This is the part I like. Yeah, that's cool. So happy. You know, have fun with this part. You can see I'm just tapping the sand a little. A little bit of mud. And that's all rinsed out. I'm going to get just a little bit of my white on the tip of my brush. And I'll come here and I'll add a little highlight to the hubcap. Maybe a little bit one for the window. Just, you know, pop those contrasts. You can see that distant little car. And you can make this any style car you want. Not really square in a square, so have a blast with that. Now, you're going to abandon me again. I'm going to dry this. Okay. So while she's doing that, I'm going to look over and just say, man, uh, thank you guys for coming and hanging out. Um, I see all of our, all of our, 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 our old Sherpet friends, many new Sherpet friends. I've seen lots of little brushes with you, with us here today. And I just wanted to say thank you guys for taking the time to come and hang out and spend some time with us in this afternoon and do some painting stuff and it's it's pretty awesome to be able to get together and do art stuff together with a big old group of people like you and i just love it so thank you all right i'm gonna get back into my little brush rinsed out and i'm gonna get my burnt umber kind of loaded onto here and work through and maybe a little bit of my white in here work through i'm gonna come along this part of the window and i'm gonna dry brush a little bit of a smear you guys see this? All right, there here. it is. I'm going to go smear. right in front of here where the windshield is. See, that's that's the place where all of the water and mud roll off the edge of the windshield. Yeah. Off the wind, edge of the windshield wiper. And all the, things I didn't know before this journey. And then you're like, oh, well, man. I, I guess we all know it, but maybe we weren't observing it. Yeah. I'm dry brushing here. And this is about that sort of smeary little edge of the piece that I want to have some over when I'm talking about it. So it's a very dry brush. And then how I got this next bit was I took a, a sponge, a very smooth sponge, and I mixed a little bit. Let me put out a little of my white. There it is. <laughs> you whisper as if there's not a mic attached to you. <laughs> I don't know what I think is going on. Over here. <laughs> We're having a weird day, you and I. I think it's a good painting, though. Oh, it's a great, fantastic painting. Right, I'm going to grab you're... another little knife, and you're... I'm going to mix a little of my burnt umber into my white. Kind of loosely. First, this is like the first part of it. We need some contrast. And I'm going to dip my little sponge. You can see me sort of tapping down. Wish me luck, because it's about to get real. All right, I'm getting. Ooh, I'm gonna have to ooh, curve like okay. this. Right. I'm gonna have to press so lightly it just barely touches the canvas. Oh, there's the, the awesome. But I like this view better. Oh yeah, you can see the little streaky. Yeah, and I'm finding that it, it's easier pulling than it is pushing. Okay, yeah. So that's a good thing to know. Is, is it maybe experiment if you're. Yeah. On, on a, Test on a, some. Get a scratch piece of paper. You know, Don't like not test it. And then, like, you know, have a moment and, you know, now, see right there, I took out too much of my car. What can you do about that? Well, because I dried it, I can take a damp brush. Oh, you just clean the windshield. Just clean the windshield. <laughs> Anywhere you feel you had too much mud. But it helps to have a scruffly brush. You know. This brush is, I, I don't recommend stuff to you because, like, I'm messing with you. Like, a lot of times it's because it's been life-saving to me, like, in moments like this. Because I love the technique of having the window be smeary, right? That it's, that it's not a beautiful, clean view because it's just, to me, more believable if there's a little bit of that roughness to it. Roughness. And the other thing that you can do is you can also get a little bit on your brush and then just... Oh, yeah, where you dry brush, just little streaky bits of mud that may have been left over on there or something. Yeah, just a little bit. And that's really up to you. I like this part. You may go, no, no. Girl, I, like I just worked seven hours on this window. I am not mudding it more. 
but one of the good things to know is if you dry it fully and then you and you're using a good propane and you can just go back and lift a little bit yeah that's a hundred whenever you hear someone say pro don't think you have to be a pro artist think that you're a person who doesn't like to put up with nonsense and you'd like your product to perform yes when you hear pro go perform yes that's what pro means it doesn't mean you have to be a professional artist it means that you're a consumer that does not like to be sold nonsense <laughs> and junk well and you'd like it to perform and i'm not saying there's not companies that who are paint specialty companies like Sonar, they make a really great product they're abstract uh paint acrylic pouches there are some exceptions but on the whole that's what you're talking about is did this company commit to making a paint product work Absolutely. to a particular degree guys we get to sign it wow that turned out great everyone everyone's looking forward to this they're like they they can either paint this for a loved one that loves to mud or they themselves are mudders and enjoy vintage trucks or are just looking at looking in looking forward to doing this kind of view because this is a very interesting take on uh well, and I know that I know the poll was like a little over a month ago and and it like exploded and you guys had so many things like because this was a this came out of our it was suggested to us by um our male community that we could do some more yeah. to and, Taylor kind of, and I was and so I put up a bunch of things that I felt were guy stuff and then I was asking all the guys like are these guy things because all of a sudden I'm like oh I don't know and anyways this was came out of that and I'm so grateful for that whole experience now I'm gonna sign right here using my little monogram liner I'm gonna go down in the dash and I'm signing with sort of the reflection color and very lightly so it's not really taking up a lot of my paint it's really nice very subtle I like that very subtle that my signature is subtle very nice and listen guys it would not be unreasonable to spend 20 hours on a piece like this and really play yeah feel like you can feel like you can throw any of my painting scenes into your into your thing just just play but one thing i really want to see is all the variations on this this different perspective because in life we need a different perspective be good to yourself say nice things to yourself be good to each other maybe say something nice to a stranger and we want to see you at the easel really soon Bye 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 guys